An anemometer can be a really useful tool, especially if you have some dangerous sport like paragliding or hang gliding. For me, it's going to be useful for a more prosaic sport, that of flying my model aircraft. I can use this to determine whether it's safe to fly at all, or whether I can use one of my small lightweight foam models, or I have to go up to a, a, a more heavyweight version. This will come in very useful. The unit comes in two versions. This one includes Bluetooth, which enables it obviously to be controlled by an app on your smartphone. You will need three batteries which aren't supplied to power the unit. Also on the back here, if somebody can explain this to me, please leave me a comment. Why would you have a tripod mount on the back there, which would mount it this way when the wind is normally coming this way? You would want it on the base or perhaps on the side. Why it's on the back is a mystery to me. Pressing the button here briefly brings us to the display and also doubles as a quick press there to turn the backlight on. Useful if you're flying in the dark, I imagine. The button here, units, kilometers per hour, feet per minute, knots, miles per hour, or back to meters per second. If we long press it, we change from centigrade to Fahrenheit. Being of a European bent, I shall have it in centigrade, or is it Celsius? Up in the top corner there we have another indicator which is the Beaufort scale. We have an indication of the battery. There is another icon which represents the auto timeout feature. Finally on the unit then we can switch between the maximum recorded and the average and also hold so we can hold a particular measurement. The recording and memory functions are accessed by long pressing the max average and then we get into the menu. Now this is much more easily done using the smartphone app. Let's get that installed and then we can look into the recording options. The QR code is conveniently located on the front of the manual there. All we have to do now is to open that in our browser and we see it in the Play Store. Now the first time I did this it couldn't find the app at all. It was missing for at least a few days if not a week and I simply don't know why it's reappeared now hopefully it would work for you it's already installed on my device with the app installed on our smartphone we obviously need to switch on the Bluetooth from the anemometer in the product manual this is not described correctly it says to either long press the unit or long press the max average and as we've seen those just enter other menus the trick is to long press them both at the same time. Now down in the corner here we can see the little Bluetooth icon which is flashing. Once it's connected to the app in the smartphone that will stop blinking. Back in our app now if we search for the Bluetooth we can see the anemometer option. We connect to that and start. If I blow into it now we can see the value increasing and we get a nice little graph. In the next section then we'll go on to see how we can record those values and export them as an Excel spreadsheet. Let's look now then at the other settings in the application. We click on the three dots at the top, look at the settings. The top one, airflow area, I guess this is something of interest to maybe air conditioning engineers or heating engineers who want to measure the flow from ventilation systems. Unit display, we've seen before, we can change that on the device or change it here. And the record interval or inter-record gap, call it what you will. So we'll leave that at one second. We can go up to 60 seconds. In the metered data, we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just finish the other settings that we can do. We can set an alarm for the highest wind speed. So currently that's at 30 meters per second and on the low speed for the alarms. In the meter data then, we tap on record and obviously now it is recording the data. So I'm just going to switch on my desk fan. Hopefully it's not going to create too much noise on the microphone. We will have some data there now. We stop the record and hit the read function. Give it a title, so let's call it 3082B. 
And for the remarks, we'll just use today's date. Importantly now, we have to get rid of the keyboard and hit this plus sign. If you don't do that, it won't save it. Go back to the main screen now. We have a little clipboard icon at the top here. You can see I've got a couple of test results in there. We tap on it and it shows us the same graph that we've seen from the front page. However, if we, with two fingers, go onto the display there, we can change the view and scroll through the results. Clearly it's giving us the average max and min values under the graph there. Finally, with a little down arrow, it will save the file as an XLS, an Excel spreadsheet. We come out of the app now, go into our files program, the internal storage. We can see we have the files created by the anonometer and we want the anonomate folder. Click on our data and there's our two files. Tap on it simply. There's the corresponding data with the temperature, the wind speed and the volume. All very useful information. A neat and practical device then. I'm going to find it very useful when flying a particular model. If it's struggling with the wind, I'll be able to make a note of what the wind speed was and use that to select an appropriate model the next time out. Especially like the Bluetooth function to be able to record the values on the smartphone. When I'm flying it's not possible to press buttons and things. I'm fully occupied with trying not to crash. I hope you found that overview useful. If you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and please like and subscribe.